Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're looking at how to create Bootstrap 5 cards and iterate over data using Hugo. For today's video, it's assumed you've got Hugo and Visual Studio Code set up, and it's also assumed you've imported Bootstrap 5's CSS and JS into your project. You'll also have a basic knowledge of Hugo's menu system and the Bootstrap 5 navbar. If you need any help with any of these items, please check the link above to my Hugo playlist and you can get help with all of these items. After completing today's video, you will be able to create Bootstrap 5 cards. You'll be able to iterate over data in an array to produce Bootstrap 5 cards. Before we go any further, let's have a look at the completed project from today's video. Now before we continue, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video. After many years of traveling and working remotely, I frequently use Safety Wing for my travel and remote work insurance needs. Now that COVID-19 has spread around the world, it's even more important than ever. Safety Wing has both remote health and digital nomad insurance, which includes coverage for COVID-19. It's both affordable and simple to understand. I've done my homework and Safety Wing is the best value for money travel insurance around. You can even sign up when you're already away from home. Below in the description is an affiliate link. If like me, you decide that Safety Wing is right for you, use the affiliate link to support this channel. So let's get started with the first step and that's creating a template. Now before we look at the code, you'll have to check the link below. I've left a link for a template project and it's not only a Hugo project, but it has some images in there that we're going to use for setting up the cards. So if you follow that link, you've then got a zip file that you can download for the source code for today's lesson. And then once you've got that, downloaded and extracted, you have to follow the link to the cards page in the Bootstrap 5 docs. And then you can scroll down to the first example and you have to copy and paste that code. And then open up the project in Visual Studio Code. We're gonna head into the layouts folder and the index.html. Now this file is for the home page. We're gonna start with that. So we're not gonna to touch this row and column, we're going to create a new row below that. So because Visual Studio Code has Emmet installed and enabled by default, we can type in div.row and then div.col. Now for now we're going to create three cards. So we're going to do the utility class is col-md-4 and tab. And then inside there, we're gonna copy and paste in the code from the Bootstrap website. Now we're gonna remove this inline style, which defines the width. You then have to link an image. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna hard code this first, check it all works, and then we'll set it up to use data. So to access the image, if you look in the static folder under IMG, you'll see there's four placeholder images. Now to make, make this work, I've made sure that all these images are the same aspect ratio. So to access that, access that image, we'll use slash IMG slash placeholder one dot JPG. For now, we'll put a, an alt text of placeholder image. We'll update that later. And then we'll save that and we'll see if it works. So if you open a new terminal up and then run Hugo server, the development server will start. So here's our card. What we need to do now is we'll reproduce the card three times. So we'll see how it displays. We'll add some spacing, not only between the cards, but below the cards. So if they stack on a small screen, we'll have space between them, which you don't get by default. And we'll remove this content here at the top of the screen. So we'll start with the content. We'll head into our content folder and open up index.md and we'll remove this text here, the sample content. We'll also change the name of the title to one and basic. Let's head back into our index.html. So let's copy and paste the column and the card two more times. 
then we'll save that and we'll see what we need to change in terms of layout. So the first thing we need to do is add some padding below or margin below the row so that the cards don't clash with either the footer or whatever content, whatever other contents below them. And the other thing we need to do is add some spacing between them. So if we make the screen narrower um, to emulate a tablet or a mobile device, you'll see that there's no space between the cards. And the easiest way for us to achieve that, to get the space between and around, we can do that uniformly with a gutter class. So G3 will create a uniform space, not only above and below, but also around them. And to create some padding below the row, we can use P3. So there's our space between the cards, and you'll see there's space at the bottom. And if we go back to our full screen view, you'll see we've got our space at the bottom, and the, um, the space above and below and left and right is also uniform. So now we need to create some data in the pages front matter and we'll iterate over it with the range function in Hugo. So before we look at the template, we're gonna go and create our data. So in the front matter section of your index.md and that's between the, the three dashes, we're gonna create a new entry called cards and that will be accessible under dot params. Hit enter after cards and then use a dash and a space. And this will be our first card. So we've got to create a title and we'll call this one four by four on the beach. We're then gonna put in some text for the card and for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna reference where I got the images from. So we'll call this an image from Unsplash. We'll then put in a link to where the image came from. I'll paste that in. And then most importantly, the URL link to the image, and that's gonna be stored locally. So we'll paste that in. And for now, that's gonna be relative to the static folder. In future videos, I'll show you how to use Hugo assets and how to resize images and serve them in different formats and serve responsive versions of images. Now, all we have to do for additional cards is we'll copy that and we'll paste it below and we'll modify it. And to make this a bit faster, I'm going to copy and paste in the modified versions. There we go. So we'll save that and then we'll set up our template. So in your template, the first thing we're gonna do is we'll conditionally display this section of the code here. So we're gonna use the two curly brackets and we use an if statement, which is a, a conditional. And the condition which will determine whether or not this code is displayed is whether or not dot params dot cards is present. And right now it is present, but if we were to highlight all of this section and comment it out with control KC, then the code wouldn't display. We'll put the if statement in, but then I'm gonna go right down to the bottom of that section of the code. Now be careful, don't go down to the bottom div because that's for the container. Go by the second last div and we'll put in an end tag. So this whole section of code will only display if the card information is present. That way, if you disable these cards, you can disable all the code. That makes things a lot cleaner for you and easier for you to maintain. You won't have to go back to your template. All you'll have to do is modify your markdown file. The next thing we'll do is we'll range over some data. So we're gonna go back in, we're gonna delete the second and third cards. So we've only got our one card now. And above that first card, we'll put in range, which is the function we're using. And we're gonna 
range over dot params dot cards. And then we'll go down and we'll put our end in below it. Now, if we run that, we'll end up with three cards, but the content won't actually be pulled out of the data. So let's have a quick look at that. So we'll save that and we'll check out the site. So as you can see, we've got three cards. It's, it's running off the template. We've only got it, we've only actually got one card written hard coded into the template, but it's running three cards because there's three cards defined in the data. What we have to do now is look at all the pieces of information in this template that need to be unique to each card. So we'll start with the image. Now if you look in your front matter, you'll see that we've got cards and then image. So to access that, it's just like here we've accessed .params.cards. Here we're going to access or inside .params.cards, so we've just got to access .image because we've already got the .params.cards but we're arranging. So it's quite simple, we just delete our image source, the double curly brackets and .image. The next thing we'll do is the alt text and to keep it simple we will just put the title in there. So we're going to put dot .title and that matches up with title there. We'll then do our text and our link. We'll repeat title here first, so we can copy and paste that. And we'll delete our text. And in terms of the link, for this particular example, I'm going to hard code in source, but you could place that in your front matter. And we'll save that. Let's have a look. There you go. So we've got our three cards and the titles and the text has come through and the link. Now what we'll do is we'll make that unique to each card, just as an example, so because you'll probably need to do that with your particular site. So I'm going to come in here and instead of it saying source, we're going to do dot link text. And I'm camel casing that, so the second word's got a capital letter, so I can clearly see that it's a, it is actually a separate word to link. And I'll save that and then we've got to head back into our data and below link we'll make a new entry link text and just do source and that'll be the same on all of them but you might want to make that unique. Let's have a look. Great, so it works. There's one more thing we want to look at and that is what happens if you don't include one of these pieces of data. So I'm going to go down to, for example, the link. I'm going to comment out the link for the first card because you might want to have a link for that particular image. So we'll save that and we'll see what happens. So we'll inspect the source for that button. And as you can see, we've got a blank parameter here for the A tag. Now that's not very useful. If there's no actual link for that button, the, the button itself's not gonna work. So what we'll do is we will set Hugo up to conditionally display that button only if a link has been provided. Now the easiest, there's two ways you can do it in Hugo. I'll show you the first way, which I've already taught you is we do if dot link and we've got our link there and then we can end. That will work. As you can see for that first image there is no button present but it's actually a, an easy way to do it and it's much more 
terse, it involves having less text in your code. And that's a command called with. So we take out the if and we put with. Now what we can do is, it's just like inside our range, we don't have to retype .params.cards inside our range, we just type in the name of the item inside our array. Now inside our link, Hugo then assigns .link to the context. So inside .link, if we want to access .link, we just use dot. But the problem with that is, it then gets difficult to access items that are not dot link. So when you save this file, you're going to get an error and that's because Hugo cannot find link text because there's no link text inside link. Now, if we add a dollar sign before dot link text, that will direct Hugo to look for link text in the context of the page, just like we've got dot title, we could be looking for dot link text, and that doesn't work either because it's actually dot params dot cards, and then inside the particular card we've got link text. So the dollar sign's not going to work in this particular case, but there's a way we can do it, and that's inside the range, if we put in dollar sign E, and you could write element if you wish, but I'm going to shorthand to E and then colon equals. The, every time Hugo ranges over the cards, the context, which currently we're just accessing with dot, will be assigned to E. It, it still will assign it to dot, but it's also assigning it to E. So we can do dollar sign E, and we'll save that, and as you can see, it's working. Now you could go back through all of these things and put dollar sign E before all of them, but it's not necessary because Hugo doesn't just assign the context of the particular card we're on to dollar sign E, but it also assigns it to the dot. Now, you do need to have a title and a text and an image for each of the cards, so we don't need to use a with statement for those, but in this particular case, we're making the link optional. Let's have a look at the site. So there you go, we've, we've got our, our buttons missing from the first one, which is, is the desired outcome. And then if we check, inspect the source of the second one, it's working correctly. So before we continue, I'm just gonna go back in and enable the link for the second card, because we're gonna use that for our subsequent examples. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I'll be continuing with the Bootstrap Cards tutorial in a later video, which will be part two. In the meantime, remember to like and subscribe so you get regular updates. And if you've got any constructive feedback or comments, can you please place it below? Thanks very much for watching.